Hello everybody, it's great seeing you back again. Today I'm going to be starting a bit of a new series. It's called uh, Bug Bounty Bites. I also have my Bug Bounty Bits. And in the Bug Bounty Bites I'm going to attempt to uh, go very in-depth into one particular topic. Today's topic will be covering stored cross-site scripting and I'm going to be using the damn vulnerable web application to teach you guys a little bit about stored cross-site scripting. I'm going to be showing you how it works and why it works. I'm also going to be showing you a few filter evasion techniques and a few uh, other things you can try while testing for cross-site scripting. So let's start, shall we? First of all, as you can see, my security level has been set to low. So uh, you all probably saw this one before. I'm just going to enter a name. I'm also going to enter a message. And in my message, I'm going to enter some JavaScript. So this is just simple JavaScript to pop up a confirm box. One tip I can give you guys already, always use confirm, don't use alert when you test this kind of stuff. Alert is probably the most filtered JavaScript command there is. So when I sign my guestbook, nothing happens. Now I'm going to see why, probably because I didn't clear my script deck. As you can see I forgot to... <laughs> I just typed in script and script twice, so that's not going to work. Script confirm. As you can see, even I make a lot of mistakes. So slash script. This should work a lot better. There we go. We have our cross-site scripting. Now, why does this work exactly? It's because anything I enter in my message gets printed directly to the page to the guestbook comments section. As you can see, my message has been printed directly into here. When I view the source of my web application, of my damn vulnerable web application, I can see that it's sanitizing the message input in that it strips slashes and, and, and it does some things to it, but it's not sanitizing the, mes the, the message input like it should, or the name input for that matter. It's not removing my uh, script tags from there, so it just puts out pretty much whatever it's set in the uh, variable, it puts that out to the page. So when I enter JavaScript code, as you can see that JavaScript code gets printed directly into the page. This can also uh, make so that you can insert content, HTML content into the page. For example, I'm going to show you guys this. Uh, so this is the B tag from HTML and I'm just going to use this as my message and sign the guestbook. And as you can see, my message is printed in bold. This is because it also just outputted the B tag. Now what I'm going to do is clear the guestbook. <coughs> I'm going to go to the security page and I'm going to set my security settings to medium. What I'm going to be teaching you guys in the stored cross-site scripting section medium is how to bypass filters one technique of how to bypass filters. There are a lot of techniques. Um, another one is going to come up in the hard section. But I would advise you guys to look at the uh, filter evasion technique sheet sheet you can find on Google. I'll also include those links in the uh, description, but as you can see, OWASP uh, also included it on the uh, damn vulnerable web application, also included the link to the OWASP page, but it's not available anymore. It gives a 404. So that's why I'm going to be pasting it in the uh, comment in the description box below as well. Now on to the medium section. Um, we'll also uh, learn to how to bypass some front-end validation. So first things first, of course, we're going to test the same thing we just did. Script confirm slash script. There we go. And we're going to sign our guestbook. I'm going to be copying this real quick. And as you can see, it filtered out the script tag, apparently. So that's good, it, it, it uh, filtered out what it had to do. Um, there are a few ways we can try to get around this. So for example, as you can see, I have my script tag in here, and it's going to try to filter out script. So what I'm going to do is just put script in here again, and it's going to filter out the first script, but it's not going to filter out the second one. So it's going to filter this one out and when it does it'll just say script again this that's the intention behind the attack so I'll sign my guestbook 
and as you can see it's not working as intended because uh, the script tag is not being printed onto the page. Let me inspect the element for you again. As you can see the message is just confirmed. Now we'll look at the source page real quick. View source again. There we go. So as you can see here we do have input sanitation. We use HTML special characters on the message. This particular PHP function, I'll google it for you real quick. What it does is uh, it converts five characters into HTML entities where applicable. So it's going to be make it impossible for us to do our cross-site scripting attack. On, not impossible, but really, really difficult. But as you can see, this particular check has not been applied to the name. So we'll try to hack the name then. Let's enter our O. As you can see, that's also not going to work. Why is that? Because when we enter our name, we can enter 10 characters at maximum. Now this is a front-end validation. When I inspect my source code, you can see that the, uh, there is a parameter on the input called max length and it's set to 10. When I remove this parameter, of course, my input validation is also gone. So now I can input whatever I want again. So I'm going to try it in here, script confirm script. I'm going to copy this and I'm going to put on a new message, test and send my guestbook. Now as you can see, again, let's inspect the element here. It filtered out our script tags. Annoying, but we have a, fil we have a way to avoid that filter. So let's remove our front end validation again. And let's try the script command that had the script in it. So we started with this command script confirm slash script. We take the script tag again and we paste it into the first script tag and into the slash script tag. And then we sign our guestbook again. And as you can see, we successfully completed the medium challenge. So this is how you avoid some filtering. You can, if the script tag is filtered, you can try to just insert the script tag into the script tag itself. That way it will filter the first one out and you're left with a still complete script tag. This doesn't always work. Some filters are properly set up where they will filter all of the script tags. So they will go over your input recursively until they have everything removed. Not a lot of them do. So that's something to note. Now we're going to go back to the security page and we're going to put high on. So we have high security enabled now. We're going to go back to the stored cross-site scripting page, clear the guestbook because this cross-site scripting is really annoying when it keeps popping up. And again, we're going to try the same thing we tried with the name. All right, uh, let's remove the front-end validation first. And we're going to use the same script tag that we used before where we put the first script tag inside of itself and we're going to test it and as you can see it removed most of that so there's probably some kind of filter that it removes everything after it finds the first script or something related to that so what i'm going to do i'm going to remove the front end filters again there we go and now I'm going to try something different. I'm just going to try with an image tag. So I'm going to say image source equals X to invoke an error. And then I'm going to uh, use the handler and on error equals confirm to tell it that when an error occurs, it should pop up a confirm box. Again, executing my JavaScript. And we're going to sign the guestbook and this works. So again, we completed our cross-site scripting challenge. Quickly going to gloss over the source code again. Uh, as you can see, it does a prec replace, meaning it replaces everything related to script, but it doesn't replace things to related to image. So these are a few of the techniques that you have available in your tool set to uh, avert these filters, to evade them, but it's not the only ones, of course. Once again, I'm going to put the cross-site scripting cheat sheet in the description. Now, when you completed a cross-site scripting like this, a stored cross-site scripting, there are several things that can happen. This is particularly a guestbook that everybody can see. So this means that it's a stored cross-site scripting that is open to everybody who visits the website. You can also, for example, have a cross-site scripting that is stored on a private page. 
when that happens, the severity is a lot less lower because you would have to chain that cross-site scripting with a different bug to be able to make another person your target. Otherwise, you would just be able to infect yourself. For example, you could chain it with a cross-site request forgery to insert a cross-site scripting into somebody else's settings page or somebody else's private page that would be able to steal their cookies, for example, and send them on to you, or steal personal data from that page and send them on to you, or insert some data that would not be desirable. So that's pretty much what I wanted to tell you guys about stored cross-site scripting. Reflected cross-site scripting is pretty much the same. Uh, I'm going to be making a small extra video about it. Uh, the dumb cross-site scripting is a whole different beast. We'll talk about that soon. Um, I would like to guys, thank you guys for watching. If you made it this far into the video, comment banana in the comments. You guys are champions. Thank you. <laughs> um, I hope I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you for watching and bye.